Welcome back everyone to Self Longevity Blueprint. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. And today's topic is about taurine and whether it can be a key to healthy aging. Let's dive into a very fascinating study that just got published in the journal Science that looks at taurine deficiency and how that can potentially be a marker for aging. So with that, Let's dive into the data. Now, before we get into all of the information about the study, it's important to understand that we're all getting older. You know, in 2019, the number of people above the age 65 was about 1 in 11. But the projections are that by 2050, you're going to have 1 in 6 folks out there that are going to be over the age of 65. So aging is something that is rapidly increasing for everybody across the country. And we need to look at ways to be able to age gracefully, healthy, and if we're able to slow it down or even reverse some of those things, that makes a lot of sense to be able to do. So let's take a look at some potential anti-aging compounds that we're doing all sorts of research on. And I'm going to talk about those on this channel in upcoming videos. There's rapamycin. There's metformin, there's NAD, there's senolytics. Senolytics, remember, they're designed to kill senescent cells, which are essentially cells that have stopped dividing. They just kind of hang out and release all sorts of inflammatory molecules out there. So with that, some things you want to know about aging before we dive into all the data is as you age, there's a number of things that are going on in your body. There's genomic instability. Your DNA starts to break easier. There's mitochondrial dysfunction. Remember, your mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell, and there are issues where they're able to regulate the energy not as effectively as they did when they were younger. Then, of course, we deal with stem cell exhaustion where the stem cells aren't available as much. And we have this buildup of these asleep cells or what we call senescent cells that do nothing but release inflammation in the body. And more important than all of these things is the fact that when we look at our metabolism, it's constantly changing. Our ability to efficiently extract nutrients out of food goes down as we continue to age. So when we start to shift and look at molecules that can potentially be helpful, taurine is a very interesting molecule. Its origins are really interesting in itself because it was first isolated in 1827 from ox bile. And even though it's an amino acid, it's one of those amino acids that a body can produce to a certain extent. It's actually produced from cysteine inside a body, but it also is found from the diet. For example, meat, fish, and dairy are good sources of taurine. Now, vegans and vegetarians may actually need to supplement with it because your own production is usually not as efficient. When it comes to taurine concentration in the blood, what you see is that as we age, taurine concentration continues to decline. And lots of studies have shown that taurine deficiency is linked to a number of issues, those being elevated BMI, diabetes, just obesity by itself, liver issues, fatty liver, liver disease, abdominal obesity, inflammation, even high blood pressure. So when we look at taurine concentration with aging, we can see that not just in humans, but across species. In this particular study, they looked at mice, they looked at monkeys, and they looked at humans. And in all three, you saw a steady decline, which is quite substantial, up to 80% decline as folks got into ages 65 plus. So the question becomes is, could supplementing taurine be helpful? Now, in this particular study, the researchers gave a massive dose of oral taurine at 1,000 milligrams per kilogram of body weight to 14-month-old mice, and they did that on a daily basis until their end of life. So what they saw was that from a lifespan perspective, the median lifespan increased by about 10 to 12%, and the life expectancy at 28 months increased by 18 to 25 percent. This is a dramatic increase in mice. Now, we don't have that same data yet in humans to see if it makes any difference, but those studies are underway to be able to look at that data, and we can rely on some of the population data to give us some clues there. But the benefits of taurine supplementation on mice were quite dramatic. There were so many improvements in the bone, in the pancreas, in the gut, the brain, the immune system, fat, energy, even muscle. And when you looked at the hallmarks of aging, taurine had a dramatic effect on things like senescence. It decreased senescence. It increased the ability of cells to communicate with each other. It decreased your telomere shortening that occurs with aging and is a hallmark of us getting older and weaker. 
It improved nutrient sensing. It improved epigenetic changes. It also helped with our genomic or our DNA stability going on. Also, we saw that in a lot of folks, there's things like stem cell exhaustion, and it actually blocked that and improved how well our mitochondria were able to function. So when we look at specifics on this study and what they tested for, they saw that for weight, specifically age-associated body weight gain, it suppressed it by 10%. It increased bone mass inside the mice compared to the controls. It increased their ability to be able to be active, specifically measured through hanging time and distance run on standardized protocols. It also reduced depression-like behavior in mice, which is quite interesting. Of course, insulin sensitivity and glucose metabolism is a huge concern of ours, and we saw improvements on both of these markers. More importantly than that, it suppressed senescence. Remember those cells that have stopped dividing? They just kind of hang out and basically cause inflammation in the body. It reduced that. And it also reduced this myeloid leukocyte prominence that we see as we get older, where these cells essentially are leading to an inflammatory type state. And we saw that taurine managed to reduce it. Now, last but not least, in the study, they also tested for what happens to markers of reactive oxygen species. And what they saw was that two specific things they were looking at was lipid peroxidation, which went down by 22%, and protein carboxylation, which went down by 11%. So both of these things tell us that taurine has these pleiotropic effects. In other words, it's got effects all over the body. And it's quite interesting that something so readily available can have so many impacts in our body simply by supplement. Now, what's interesting in taurine and exercise is when they looked at it in male athletes, sprinters, endurance runners, natural bodybuilders, what they saw was that having them do a graded exercise test, they found that it led to a 1.16 fold higher level of taurine in the blood. So in other words, exercise increases taurine levels in the blood. Now here's the million dollar question. Is the benefits of exercise because taurine is increasing? We don't know exactly, but it could be one of the many mechanisms and benefits of exercise. Now what about humans? Lots of data is going to come out in the near future. Don't worry, I'll be sure to bring that to you guys. But in the meanwhile, what you want to know is taurine is actually safe for human consumption. Studies show that up to three grams is safe. Some folks say up to six grams. Don't have the full data, but overall relatively safe. Side effects that happen are pretty mild. Nausea, vomiting, headache, abdominal pain are very rarely reported, but can happen. So bottom line, as you're thinking about this and you're wondering, should I take taurine or not? It's a bit early to look at the data in humans because we don't have it. But in animal models, it's quite convincing. And the side effect profile seems to be pretty low. Thanks so much for watching, guys. As always, I'd really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share this video with your friends. I would love to hear your thoughts and comments below. And if there are topics you want to hear about, drop those in the comments below. And I'll see you guys next time.